Hello guys, welcome to Savara Russia. So today we are heading to the forest. It's gonna be awesome, I hope. <laughs> I'm on the MSR snowshoes. The beauty dog is with us. And uh, I'm using the MSRs because, as you might know, we had some uh, above freezing degrees. We have some thaw, I think it's called in English. And uh, now we have the frost again, so uh, the surface is, is pretty stable. Uh, anyway, around here, I don't know how it goes in the forest actually. But uh, as you can see, the beauty dog, he can travel here on the snow, no problem. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, let's get away from the civilization here and head out into the southern part of my forest. Tell you guys, it's wicked to be able to travel on the snowshoes. I'm actually able to just walk in the forest, it's pretty awesome. Skis are, of course, also pretty awesome. But I mean, it's like really like you're like some kind of a big boat or ferry or whatever, you know. We want to turn around, you have to. It's really cumbersome. But this is awesome. Just head on. Okay, guys, so I think this is the goodest place as any to, uh, to make a little uh, classic Scandinavian Nordic woodsman's meal. And uh, for that, we need a lot of wood. <laughs> no, but I'll take this here anyway, because uh, I can also show you how to cook a little bit and so on on deep snow and blah, 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 blah. So uh, yeah, I'll get the saw out because the saw is my friend. Others, for others, uh, the saw is, uh, the axe is their friend, but the saw is my friend. We'll take my latest and newest friend, this little wonder here. Silky Gumboy with the curved blade. This is really, really awesome. When you're working on a dead standing, it's pretty good idea to check the top if it's wobbling too much and if the top breaks off and falls down in your head. And that especially happens with an axe when you're pounding on it. Good thing about this blade here is it's uh, also designed to rip cut, no cut this way, so it makes it easier to make these angled cuts here. Gonna hung up up there a little bit. Well, we're gonna cook right out there, so I thought it would be nice to get it out there. But this is nothing we cannot handle. I think. So here's a little trick I have learned myself over the years. So when it uh, gets snagged like that, and you only have a small saw, not the katana boy, and, and if the tree is not big, you cut from up top here, as you can see. Down to here until the until the start to bind, and then you cut from the bottom until it breaks. Then you can take the tree, pull it back, and it'll fall down. Pretty easy. So we're almost ready to do some uh, classic Scandinavian or Nordic uh, woodsman's cooking. But uh, yeah, I trampled uh, or stomped a little bit of a, a spot here to sit in. You can see down here maybe. Let's see if we can get you down. Yeah, you can see here. It's not that deep that much. Well, let's try and take a look and see how deep the snow really is. But I have a little stick here. So it doesn't go in the cam, yeah it does. Oops. That's up to the waist. A little bit higher actually. No, waist deep. So let's cook some food, because it's awesome food and cooking is awesome. And cooking in nature is even awesomer. It's much gooder, as they say in the States. <laughs> so yeah, it's fair enough to say that this is a little bit overkill for just uh, making a, a meal. But uh, when you have a saw that works really awesome, then why not? And uh, at the same time, I can show you how to make a small fire you can cook on on, uh, on deep snow. But uh, yeah, I'm rambling, let's get on with it, because it's a long time since I've been to the forest. <laughs> so, so bear with me, guys. So here we have the little field kitchen. 
Let's try and get the try and get the fire going. I'll be using some fine birch peelings and a little bit of a inner tube. That is always good. And some uh, pine needles, of course. Since it's birch bark scraping, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a gas on the on the ferro rod here. Fine. I can smell inner tube. <laughs> inner tube is awesome. Okay, let's get on with the cooking. Uh, over there, we have the campfire now. I changed sides because the the the, the smoke predominantly goes over there. We are in a clearing, so the smoke goes a little bit here and there. So if I look a little bit funky eyed, it's not because I've been crying. But let's take a look at what it is we're actually gonna eat. It's very simple, very fast and very tasty. What we have here is a little package where we have some bacon, bacon and two slices of rye bread. The bacon we're gonna fry. I don't have any oil with me, but uh, I brought some butter. It's cold, so uh, butter is not a problem, right? And also some guys said I should ditch this Mora here for a more serious knife or whatever. Most of you know that I'm not a big Mora fan, but I love this setup here. And it's a very, very light knife and uh, I think it's 130 grams or 127 grams. Or maybe it's four ounces or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah. I moved a little bit away from the from the from the large knives. I don't know why, but uh, yeah. So this is a all sorts of tasks knife. But of course, I have a belt knife with me also. Very nice knife. It's actually made of the exact same steel, uh, Sandvik 14C28N or something like that. It's a stainless steel, if you want to say it like that. This is also easily the sharpest knife I have. Then I have two stainless knives. One I can use for all sorts of stuff and uh, one I can use for food and this and that. So we're gonna take a little bit of butter here. We could of course also have brought some uh, oil in a small bottle or something. But I didn't. Do the trick. As I said, this dish is a true Scandinavian or Nordic uh, woodsman's lunch, and uh, this is why it's actually Finnish. And there's almost no more Scandinavian country than Finland, except from Norway, maybe. So I'm wearing the Finnish M36 uh, field cap today, wool cap. It's nice. I like the German better though, but uh, yeah, it's a Finnish M36. The Finns also, also call them uh, the blood scoop for some reason. I'm sure there's a Finnish viewer that can tell me why they call it the blood scoop. But I'll get frying and uh, get back to you guys. We... Yeah, there's no escape from the smoke. It smells good. You can see we are cooking on the logs actually. The bacon sounds just right. We have to, uh, we have to fry it pretty hard, actually. We need to boil a little bit of water. So I'll boil three sixteenths of a cobblestone worth of water here. You can see the bacon is very soon ready. I'll say it is pretty ready. You can see the log is burning through pretty soon. But it's also been burning for quite a while, actually. I have the bacon in the in the fabric here because uh, bacon and so on actually likes to be stored in something breathable instead of uh, plastic bags and this and that. So water is boiling. We will mix this here around a little bit. Some of you might find this a little bit weird or odd, but uh, this is how it is. We will dunk some boiled water in just to cover this stuff here. So now it looks like this. We will take and mix it a little bit more. And then it will have to stand a little bit and suck off some of the water here. So uh, I'll get back to you in a few seconds or minutes. So this is what our little dish looks like by now. This is what our fire looks like. 
You see it's almost burned through. You can make this last longer with, with just using a fresh wood or or wet wood for example, but but uh, I use fresh wood when I have dry wood and uh, I don't need a fire lasting that long. But if you want to know how to make a fire on a deep on deep snow that lasts for a long time, you can check the link up here. But uh, Let's dig into this food here, because uh, it's gonna be awesome. You might find it a little bit odd with the black bread in water with the bacon, fried bacon, but uh, it's very delicious. Boy. Look at this. Ooh. Tastes exactly like black bread with bacon. It's really awesome. <laughs> well, the Scandinavians, you know, we like uh, we like black rye bread, sourdough bread. All this white bread is not good for you. Yeah, so awesome day out, awesome meal. Really, really awesome to be able to walk around in the forest as long as it's uh, frost anyway. Because the problem is, of course, when it gets above zero, it's really, really hard to to travel around here. Then I need the hunter skis and. I actually don't know if they start to delaminate or so what you can say. Anyway guys, good to be out again. Please check the links in the description and sub share, subscribe, sub bell, sub like and all that good stuff. And until next time, get out and train, get it done. I'll see you next time here in the very late winter time Russia. Thank you for your time guys.